Good morning. He is risen. Welcome one and all to our Easter worship service. Welcome. It's God's new day. And we bring our joyful hallelujahs to this place and we're so glad that each and every one of you are here. As you can see, our flowers today are the Easter lilies and you'll find an insert in your bulletin that shows uh, who's remembered and what the special reason is for each of the lilies. And today, uh, another announcement, we'll be collecting a special Easter offering, which is used to support the general ministries of the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. And a special thank you to everyone who helped uh, prepare the service this morning with the lilies and also with the labyrinth for a good Friday. We had a good, good service there. Um, also, thank you to all of the musicians who are here today to help us celebrate. Each of you are appreciated. And a few other quick announcements on the back of the bulletin. Um, we're collecting the hygienic supplies for Willard Elementary. There's a box in the back, and we're collecting for outreach the L and the F dollars. So don't forget those. Uh, are there other announcements? Karen, did you have something? Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll double check. Test. Test, test. Okay, speak really loud. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll talk. <laughs> she said the soundboard has not risen. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, let's uh, please stand as you're comfortably able and we'll join together in our opening hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. It's number 216.
worship? The tomb is empty. Christ is risen. Jesus lives. Eternity shines through the open and empty tomb. This is the day that we have all been waiting for. Let us pray. God of life, we praise you for the miracle of Easter. You are our strength and our song. You have become our salvation. We pray for great joy on this day of celebration for ourselves and for all who worship as we rejoice in Jesus' resurrection. May we all sense how the resurrection is a source of great hope. This day awakens in us long-awaited new life. May each person here today sense the power of the gospel and be drawn closer to you by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen.
scripture reading today is from the 12th chapter of Luke's Gospel, verses 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while you were still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and then he went home, amazed at what had happened. So, amazed indeed. The women and the men who followed Jesus might have even been in a little bit of shock each and every day of Holy Week. They'd seen a lot. And they may have felt that the crucifixion had been just one thing too many. They had their hopes raised and dashed. The women had purchased the spices just before the Sabbath, and then according to strict rules that they had, they had to postpone the actual burial treatment until the Sabbath day had officially ended, as daybreak came there on Easter morning. And they must have had a sense of duty that was motivating them as they made their way to the tomb in that semi-darkness. They had a task to do. In that moment, they weren't thinking of all that had gone on in Jesus' teaching ministry in the three years prior to that morning, a morning that they would never forget. The Sabbath was ending, and this was the first day of the week. And they probably had their game faces on as they showed up to do what needed to be done. Imagine their surprise, though, instead of the silence they were expecting, they heard a question. Why do you look for the living among the dead? And it's a good thing that a further explanation followed immediately. They heard, he is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. So I'm picturing a lot of forehead slapping here as the women and eventually the apostles themselves thought back to all that Jesus had told them before. So when the women first go back and tell the apostles that the tomb is empty, these men seem to be scratching their heads and muttering to themselves. Yeah, that doesn't sound quite right. I don't think these ladies have their story straight. People don't get up and leave their own tomb. This is nonsense. This doesn't make any sense. But Peter must have figured, what have I got to lose? I might as well dash over there, check this out and see what's going on for myself. I was kind of hoping for a do-over anyway. These past few days haven't been my finest hour. And he's probably thinking, I really wish I hadn't claimed that I didn't know the Lord. I just kind of panicked. So Peter goes to Jesus' burial place and finds it empty, just as the women had reported. And after his eyes adjust to the gloom of the tomb, he makes some mental notes about the details he sees there how the burial cloths were arranged, and so forth. And then scripture tells us Peter went home amazed. And he must have been thinking, okay, the tomb's empty. I've seen it for myself now. And the women were reminded by the angels that Jesus told us that this would happen. Now that I've been to see it for myself, I believe. But the thing is, what does it mean? What does it mean for me, and what does it mean for all of us? We came down here with the Lord all the way from Galilee 
So what are we supposed to do without our leader? What does this mean for what happens next? So Peter was experiencing wonder and awe and amazement. And he went away from the tomb and wondered what had happened, wondered what was going on in that moment, and he wondered what all this really meant. He puzzled over what would come next. Why do you look for the living among the dead? And this wasn't like the case of Lazarus where he came back to life in the same way that he was before. Jesus' resurrection was about new life, transformation. Jesus didn't return to be the same that he was before. Now we can sympathize with Peter. We like to have a hold on what we know and we're much less comfortable with what we don't know, what we have trouble grasping. And these followers of Jesus had heard him talk about what was going to happen. They didn't picture it unfolding in such an unexpected way. Death, really? Resurrection? Like those early followers, we have questions. What does it mean? What happens next? What does this kind of love and grace from God imply? What do we need to do in order to have our own resurrection moment? Like the women and the disciples at the graveyard, we have many questions. There's so much that we don't fully understand. We believe, we have that part down. Ah, yes, we believe, but we're curious creatures. We want to know how the whole puzzle fits together. Like Peter, we want to know what this means, and we definitely want to know what's next. We have the description of the resurrection from our scripture text, and it's easier for us to picture when we're all here together. So we're okay in the now, but we also have this coming week, and we have a whole year until we celebrate this story together again. And we can expect to have a whole bunch of those in the meantime kind of moments in our lives over the next year. We go on, even as questions arise. That's what faith is about. Faith is an action verb. We go on. Time goes on. And as it does, and as we navigate our lives, we're called to remember that we have a joy that is abiding, abounding, deep and lasting. Our joy doesn't get placed on hold until next Easter. Our joy is also our place to stand. We stand in the joy of the Lord. We witness, and like the women in our reading, we retell what we've witnessed. And by the way, don't forget to retell the good news to yourselves on a regular basis. One pastor that I used to know would say that he knew the gospel, but that his bucket leaked. That's true, isn't it? Our buckets leak. We need reminders and refresher courses in joy and in hope and in where we stand as we go through our weekly routines. Scripture tells us that as Jesus grew up and amazed Mary, his mother, she treasured these things in her heart. She preserved those moments. She stored them up for later. In our good times, we can store up assurances that will help us through the lean times. Like Mary and like the women at the tomb, we remember. And remembering is one of the jobs that we have as the church. We meet here to remember together that Jesus is risen. And that changes everything. This is the main event in all history. We're faithful to the faith when we remember, when we endure, even when we don't understand. In the meantime, we stand in God's assurances, and in some cases, we have to hold our questions until the end. Like Peter, we can stand amazed as we remember that God's steadfast love endures forever. Even without all the answers, because of the resurrection, we will never be the same. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day we remember that we do have a firm foundation and we do have a place to stand. Now, as a way of picturing how important it is to have a place to stand, imagine for a moment if you were on the edge of the Grand Canyon and you wanted to take a beautiful photo. Probably the first thing you'd do is find a stable place to stand. 
then you'd get your balance just right and enjoy the beauty as you captured it to share with others. Like that when we say he is risen or happy Easter or this is the day that the Lord has made, we are getting our balance. We're declaring that we have a stable place to stand, that we have firm footing. Now we realize the danger of falling into the Grand Canyon or whatever that kind of danger may be for you in your own life at this point in time. We're stabilized by the assurance that God has already won the victory in the cross and in the resurrection. Now we can embrace the joy and the beauty of life because we have this moment, this Easter morning, to get our bearings and to stand firm. So we're happy for this hour of worship and we feel the joy of this holy day in the church year, but we also declare, we decide, that the transformation that has taken place as a result of the resurrection extends into the week ahead and in truth for the rest of our lives. And that's something to celebrate. So we're joyful for good reason. And that joy has staying power because it rests on the amazing promises of God. And we may well find ourselves amazed like Peter. We don't fully get it either. We don't necessarily get it. We don't necessarily understand what a big thing that Jesus has done. A single Easter Sunday morning isn't enough to take in the enormity of it. We remember Jesus' claims and promises as ongoing. We remember, but we also believe in a present tense way. We don't believe once and make a note of the fact of the resurrection and then go about our business as if nothing has changed. Notice that we use the present tense, he is risen. The resurrection is more than a historical event. It's ongoing and it's still in progress. Jesus is still risen and still interceding on our behalf. Jesus' ministry continues and we're partners in that ministry. Everything has changed because Jesus blazes a new trail that we are following and will follow. He was resurrected and so will we be. Death has lost its sting because of what Jesus did in the resurrection. So like Mary, in your good spiritual times, store up treasures for the lean spiritual times. Like the women at the tomb, we can remember. We can return to the world as we leave this place and we can tell ourselves the gospel. And we can tell others in our own words and deeds, in what we say and in how we live, what we have witnessed. So Easter is more than a happy moment with lilies. This isn't a fresh coat of paint on a faded world. Being here this morning isn't like a battery charge or getting a nice coat of wax to brighten us up for heavy weather. The hopefulness and the joyfulness of Easter aren't for a passing day or season. Easter is a line in the sand. Easter is a declaration from now on, from here on out, from this day forward. Now the church has traditionally celebrated Easter for 50 days, all the way up to Pentecost, all the way into the middle of June. So hold fast to that promise. Hold on to the hope for those 50 days and when you get to the end of that 50 days, just keep on going. Keep on hoping. Embrace the joy of the good news that Christ has conquered death and has shown us the way forward. The victory has already been won. Amen.
Lift your hearts up to the Lord. Let us pray. We give you thanks, great God, for the hope we have in Jesus, who died but is risen and ruling over all. We praise you for his presence with us. God of the resurrection, we pray for those who are ill and cannot be with us today. We pray for those who have lost loved ones over the past few years. This has been such a difficult time for so many. And we pray for our family members near and far. We pray for the leaders of the nations. May they exercise their offices as servants of justice and peace. And we pray for all who are suffering from illness, grief, advancing age, and exile from home. May Christ's resurrection be a source of comfort and strength for them. May Jesus' rising and reigning bring life and light and healing. <coughs> May all who suffer in the valley of the shadow of death and disease know your healing presence. We bless you, gracious God, for gracing us with musicians who spend their talents thoughtfully and well in this place so that all of us may be lifted up and through the beautiful mystery of music be drawn closer to you. As we encounter you this morning, may we know for sure that we've been in your sacred presence and may this encounter with you in turn embolden us to live Easter lives, not only now, but also in the days to come and forevermore. Help us to take what we experience and learn here and to allow it to set a holy tone for us always and everywhere. Because he lives, we look for eternal life, knowing that nothing, past, present, or yet to come, can separate us from the great love made known to us in Jesus Christ our Lord, the very same one who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The one who can bring life out of death and hope out of surrender can make much out of the little that we are given in faith. As you give today, consider that God, with everything possible, Easter Sunday can out, who can outgive God? In Christ, we are given eternity and life that outwits death, joy that overcomes despair. And through our giving, our response to the Easter blessing made, made things tangible and substance beyond words. Through our tithes and offerings, love is answering, answering God's call for one and all. The deacons will now collect our offerings.
We play, pray, blah, we pray your blessings on these gifts, risen Lord. May the joy of Jesus' resurrection run deeply through us to bless those very existence will be affirmed and raised because you have called us to new participation in thus. May these gifts which we bring bless all who receive them and may your love and compassion be experienced through these offerings and may we feel the power of your resurrected love in all that we do. We pray with joy and in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some people struggle with the concept of sacrifice, especially when it is done on their behalf. Sometimes it's given in time, giving up an event to help someone. Sometimes it's in deed or talent, giving the gift of carpentry or cooking. But we struggle that God would give us Jesus Christ, his very life, for us. We come to this table in gratitude and awe that when we take this meal, we take in freedom and love and new beginnings. It is a sacrificial meal given freely for us. Christ's sacrifice was made especially for you and it is for us to come and receive. Now if you'll join me in our communion hymn in the green book 262.
Right, receive. You that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, "This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me." In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, "This is the new covenant in my blood." Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. God of the resurrection, we are here with joyful hearts, praising you on this powerful day of remembrance. We ask you to prepare our hearts for this meal at your table. May the bread and cup strengthen and encourage us for the lives you would have us live and for the work that you would have for us to do. Through this bread and cup, help us live as your disciples. Thank you for your gift of new life in Christ. Amen.
there are any here who would like to join the church, uh, please make your way to the front as we sing our closing hymn. And our practice is to welcome new people into membership through a simple profession of faith. Uh, if you join us in our closing hymn. It's Crown Him with Many Crowns, number 234. There is an extended introduction, so sit back and enjoy the music for about a minute. <laughs> May the love of the cross and the power of the resurrection and the presence of the living Lord be with you always.
We praise God for the mystery and also for the excitement of new life in, that's present in this day of celebration. Hear now the benediction. May the love of the cross, the power of the resurrection, and the presence of the living Lord be with you always. And may the blessing of the eternal God, creator and sustainer, risen Lord and Savior, giver of holiness and love, be upon you now and forevermore. Go now as risen people. Amen.